Okay, so we get started then. So, um, welcome back. And uh, all I've done so far is removed our plates from um, the ovens, turned off the ovens, and I give them a centrifuge. Um, I'll show you, I'll pass them around so you can see because um, sometimes people are surprised with the variation in color, for example, from the plate. So this was the first one. Um, so you can just see, I think it's mainly legs by the looks of this one, the specimens inside, but that's typical, just get different, um, the release of different pigmentation and everything. Um, but if you want to just pass it around maybe and just take a look at it. Um, and then what we're going to do is transfer the lysate from that um, and make our plate one lysate. Um, and then what we normally do with that, depending on which protocol you're following, we need to dilute that again to reduce the effect of the inhibitors that are present. Um, because we don't clean this DNA up, it's just dirty lysate that we're going to transfer in. So um, we do, we can do one in 10 or one in five. Today we're going to do one in five dilution. So I have prepared um, some plates. So we have our lysate plate and then I have our dilute plate, which I've already added 20 microliters of water to. So we're going to put five microliters of concentrated lysate into that. So again, so today's really just about transfer, transfer, pipetting across. Um, and then from there on in, Dan will take over <laughs> with the PCR prep. Um, and then you'll be able to add your DNA to the PCR reaction. So, um, and then you can see the difference between, there's the jumping spiders as well. So, yeah, but hopefully everything has worked out okay. But you, so, the, yeah, again, move, removing the caps now, you can, again, keep the same caps and reapply them. Um, we can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then it's just easier. But uh, for the moment, yeah, so if you can keep them... Just put them to one side because we'll be making a dilution and then we'll return to that plate to add ethanol to it later. But for now, uh, do you want the, I don't know. Does this work with your, um, sorry, can you pass this back there? Um, I don't know if that works with those caps as well. It's usually better with domed caps to remove it. I don't know if you've ever. So it's set, so all of it. So oh, all of the lysate oh, gets transferred out. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Because, well, we don't leave the lysate sitting, like the insects sitting in the lysate. Um, we did, we have recently tried it, but um, we're not confident is the answer uh, on the fact that like, it might just leave all the inhibitors in, you know, sitting there for just too long and releasing everything. And it's just um, like too much of a risk. So we transfer the lysate off the insect and put it back in as well. Yes, yeah, so I did centrifuge it, but did, I don't know if people did some like that, but also, you know, with the heat, when it starts to cool down, you sometimes still get a little bit, and we haven't had contamination due to that, so it's, I think it's okay. But ideally, yeah, you want to. If it's very bad, I can spin it again, in case anyone took it. So once we, yeah, once we remove the lysate from that, we then top up with ethanol. Yeah, we put ethanol over it. Usually we use 80%. Today I have 100, because it's just faster <laughs> to get in them. It doesn't really matter. It's just 80% is easier for, you know, if you don't need it to be 100%, it's going to make it a bit cheaper. It's easier for storage and shipping for that aspect of the work. 100% ethanol is extremely difficult. Yeah. 96. Yeah, so if um, so, uh, 80 is usually what we go for in the lab. Okay. Yeah, so um, yeah, so you'll be done really easy. <laughs> but everyone else with the plate and the sharing the yeah, plates are oh. going to be. Um, 100 now. Um, so yeah, so you're going to put 100 in there. And then you can eject that tip and get a new tip. And Sometimes it can be hard because you're gonna, the insect might get caught, but it's okay to go in a few times, you know, you just want to... Um, I see. Yeah. Yeah, I think that was that. Hmm? So, well, uh, yeah, but I would eject that though, because you've just, you know, you need to... You need to change the, you need to, let me see. So before, before you add it in here, we just cap this, I would do the same step for the other sample. And then we'll spin these in the minifuge because 
um, I'll explain this to everyone as well. Once you have the lysate here, we want to get all the inhibitors, everything dragged down to the bottom of the well, uh -huh. because when you do the transfer into the dilution plate, you only want to go for the top. So when the plate comes back down, you can, you can next start decapping this. Um, for the, yeah, sorry, I'm confusing you because I'm going too fast, but just move that. How are we doing? Yeah. Uh, when the plates come back down, they just need to make the dilution plate. Great. And then we're done. But that's still going to take some time. So, um, well, uh, they're going to, I'm going to give them another, actually, that's it, sorry. One second, then. I'll give them. My name is Dan. Uh, I'm here with Ben Price, uh, showing off some of the things that we do at the Natural History Museum. Um, so we'll be using our protocols I know they are different from the Sanger protocols, so uh, Adele will be talking about some of the differences that we have between our protocols. But um, uh, yeah, I'm going to talk to you about the PCR steps um, and the gel preparation steps. In terms of timing, I know this bit is a bit slow. I've never been so grateful to have multi-channel pipettes back in London. I didn't realize what a uh, privilege it was to be able to have them here. Um, so yeah, uh, we'll go through at whatever pace it takes, but later on in the day, there's a lot of stages that kind of overlap and we'll mix things in together to save a bit of time later. Priority right now is getting things into the thermocyclers because then they will take about two hours before we can really do anything. So I'm going to do a little bit of theory talk, um, but we're going to try and just plow through and then we can go over the theory again later. Um, but what we're going to be doing is doing a, not that one, um, a one-step PCR um, using indexed primers. Uh, so Ben will talk about how we've organized these index primers, but we got basically approximately 576 uh, in, um, unique combinations of primers. Um, so that means that at the moment we're keeping everything nice and separate, but later on we'll just stick everything together in the same pool so that um, they can all just go into the uh, flow cell and be sequenced together. So at the moment we're trying to keep everything nice and distinctly separate, but later on They'll be mixed up and we don't really care. We can throw them all over the place. Um, we're currently running regularly on a flongle. Um, so the flongles are the smaller flow cells, the sort of one shot use ones. And we're running three plates on each flongle. Um, with this number of combinations, we can run six plates on one flow cell. Today we have two plates plus two specimens. So that should run really well on a flow cell. Um, and yeah, so because we don't have quite as many specimens as we thought we were going to have, hopefully that will speed things up a little bit in our preparation. But obviously the pipettes will slow things down again. Um, mostly we're going to go through the protocol that you should have written down here, the PCR for ONT protocol. Um, we're going to start off by making a master mix. A lot of the things that you've done so far today will be relevant as well. So if you have lids, um, caps on your plates, try and make sure that they are going back onto the same position. Um, a little bit about how we name things. Um, so we started off with our plate name. Um, so if you've got a, a plate of specimens, that would be, for example, plate one. Then once you've got your lysate extracted from that, we get that into another plate, which we will call plate one lysate. And then our dilution plate is plate one lysate dilute. Um, that's how we do it. And then once we've got to this stage and we extract from that into our PCR plate, we have the plate one and the index plate. So we know that it's a PCR plate because it's a mixture of our original plate and our PCR indexes. And we also know which indexes are in that plate. Um, the plates of indexes, I'm going to try not to lift it up so that they spill everywhere because they've been centrifuged down. Um, they are, you know, you've got the A to H and your 1 to 12. Um, and you can see there's a little description of how the different unique indexes are done on the side there. So when you are transferring index into your PCR plate, you are keeping your specimen from A1 will go into the well in A1 and then the index from A1 will go into that well as well. Do not mix those things up. That index is how you are going to be able to tell which well everything has been in from the beginning to the end. So there we go. Um, we have a few things that we do at the museum. Um, which you might not want to do. Uh, we have um, this one step PCR uh, because we're all about kind of making it as easy as possible for us and take, spending less time in the lab. Ben did a lot of preparation to make these indexes. So he did all the hard work and we are just 
using his hard work to make our lives a bit easier. Um, we use a plant PCR kit. Uh, we are using this on insect specimens because um, the same things that um, Idel was talking about earlier, uh, we like to dilute because it helps us to get a better result in the end. Um, there are lots of things in your lysate that could prevent a good PCR from happening. Um, by using the plant kit, we think it prevents the inhibitors in your lysates from affecting your PCR. So we've had better success using a plant kit than we have one that's actually designed for insects. You might have a different experience. It depends on your equipment and depends on how you do your protocols in, to in total. Um, but yes, that's what we do. So that's what we're doing today. Uh, with the other kit that we sometimes use, it all comes in one ready-made master mix. This comes in three different tubes. We've got our buffer. We have our polymerase. Had to remember that one. And we've got some magnesium chloride. And then we add some PCR water as well to make our master mix. On your protocols, you have a master mix formula, I suppose, uh, for one well, and then what we do for a whole plate. Group down here, have you already made your master mix? And you've made your, hmm? Right. Um, so we've got a whole plate's worth over here. We've got two samples worth over here. And then we've got two desks over here who are doing half a plate each, which is, what's 96 divided by two? 48. If you make yours to the equivalent of 50. So if anyone's good at mental maths and working out what 50 times